Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a Wilcoxon signed rank test and calculating the effect size. I will be conducting the Wilcoxon signed rank test in SPSS and calculating the effect size using Excel. So the Wilcoxon signed rank test is the non-parametric equivalent of a paired samples t-test. So we would use this in a situation where our data do not meet the assumptions for paired samples t-test. So looking at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view, these are ordinal, pre-test and post-test. This is based on a Likert scale, you can see here. So that would not meet the assumption for a paired samples t-test and a Wilcoxon sign rank test would be appropriate. So let's presume with these data that we have an ID variable that has 100 participants and they're tested two times. We have a pretest and a post-test. So between these two observations, there was some sort of treatment. And let's say this is measuring anxiety. With higher scores, higher ranks in each variable representing a higher anxiety level. So if I switch back to the view where you can see the labels, you can see at the high end of the scale, we have extremely high, and at the low end of the scale, extremely low. So a zero is extremely low, and a five is extremely high. An easier way to view this is in variable view, to go to the values associated with pretest and post-test, they're the same values associated with, with both of these. And you can see 0, extremely low, then we go to low, somewhat low, somewhat high, high, and extremely high. So what we would hope for, if this were a real study, would be that the post-test scores were lower than the pretest scores, meaning that the participants improved. Whatever treatment was administered was effective, and the post-test scores would be lower than the pretest scores. So let's run the Wilcoxon sign rank test and take a look at the output and see what type of difference there is between the pretest and post-test ranks. So we go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, Legacy Dialogues, and we want two related samples. That's the Wilcoxon sign rank test. There are a couple other options here under Test Type. Let me reset this. This is what it looks like by default. Uh, there's Wilcoxon, which is what we'll be using. There's also Sign and McNamara. Sign is not used particularly often. It ignores the magnitude. It's simply interested in whether the difference in ranks is positive or negative. McNamara is used quite a bit, and it's appropriate when you have nominal data as opposed to ordinal data as we're using in this example. So to configure the Wilcoxon sign rank test, we see we have pair one here and variable one and variable two. So I'm just going to drag pretest into variable one and post-test into variable two. Under options, I'm going to add descriptive to the statistics that will be generating the output. Click continue and then click OK to run the analysis. So you can see we have three tables here. We have descriptive statistics, and this is important to look at first. We want to see the mean for pretest and post-test and see what direction it moved from the pretest to post-test. In this case, you can see the mean was 2.29 for the pretest, and it dropped to 2.06 for the post-test. So overall, uh, we could presume the participants did improve. Now, until we look further down, we, we wouldn't know if that's a statistically significant improvement, but they did improve. The standard deviations, uh, very similar, and of course, the minimum and the maximum. Uh, this is a Likert scale going 0 through 5, so a 6-point Likert scale. So there's no surprise here that the minimum and the maximum are identical for the pretest and the post-test. In the next table, we have ranks. You'll see I have post-test, pretest here. And there's negative ranks, positive ranks, 
n ties. And of course the total, which we know is 100. So you can see from the superscript here, it's a, a, b, and c. And for negative ranks, there are 23. And if you look here at the a, it's instances where the post-test was less than the pretest. So this is what we would want to see happen. This, this is improvement. If the post-test is less than the pretest, uh, that's consistent with our theory that the treatment is effective. So in, out of 100 pairs of observations, 23 and on 23 occasions, the post-test rank was lower than the pretest rank. The mean rank is also provided as well as the sum of ranks. So you can see the sum of ranks here, 444.5. Then we have positive ranks. So these are instances where the post-test was greater than the pretest. So in this example, this would be, this is 12 positive ranks. So in 12 cases, the participant reported higher anxiety in the post-test than was reported in the pretest. And then again, we have the mean rank and the sum of ranks, 185.5. So the number of negative ranks is higher than the number of positive ranks, and the sum of ranks for negative ranks is higher than the sum of ranks for positive ranks. Then in 65 cases, the post-test was identical to the pretest. So there was 65 participants that showed no change, neither positive nor negative. And then moving down here to the test statistics, we have Z negative 2.21, and we're going to use this value to calculate the effect size. As you see, effect size is not part of the output here in SPSS, but we can calculate it fairly easily in Excel. And then for the p-value, 0.027, so if the alpha is 0 0.05, this is a statistically significant result. So in this instance, we reject the null hypothesis that there is no difference between the pretest and post-test scores. So we know we have a statistically significant finding, but we do not know the effect size yet. But there's only two pieces of information we need to take over, in this case I'll use Excel, to calculate the effect size. One is this value here, negative 2.21, this z value, and the other is the n. But the n in this case is not 100, that's the total number of cases. The n is equal to the total number of observations. So we have 100 pairs, so n will equal 200. So if I move over to Excel, you can see here is the equation for effect size for a Wilcoxon sign rank test. It's also the same for a Man Whitney U. It's the same formula. So first we have uh, the value for z, which we know is negative. 2.21 and then we have the n which as I mentioned is 200 and then we need to calculate the square root of n and in Excel that's fairly straightforward it's equal sign and then sqrt and then in this case cell c4 14.14 .14. and then r is z divided by the square root of n. So it would be equal sign z divided by square root of n gives us negative 0.15. So that's the effect size. In this case, that would be a small effect size. For an effect size to be considered moderate, you would want to see a value here of less than negative 0.3. And for a large effect size, a value less than negative 0.5. I hope you found this video on conducting a Wilcoxon signed rank test and calculating the effect size to be useful. 
As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.